Alright, so this will be the final part of this series, kind of tying it all together. Uh, I took one of the plots that I had for my one of my fixed panel just to get the general shape of the of what a solar panel will put out for power. And then I was able to draw a uh, bell-shaped curve from it and derive the polynomial equation for it. And from that, <clears throat> I thought I would look at several configurations of panels. So the, the drawing here, as you see, is basically one panel facing due south and at 12 noon generates 100% of its power, whatever that rating of the panel happens to be or however you want to measure that. That's the maximum it's going to put out. And then it's less than that on either side of of uh, maximum. Now if I look at a configuration like that, it's facing one panel facing due south. And now the question comes up, well what if I use two panels? And instead of have facing them both south, let's face one a little east and another one a little west. So in this case I got an example here. Well, we'll face one of them right to the due southeast and one to due southwest. So that will be a 90, per 90 degree spacing between them. Then let's, you know, knowing that, let's look at three panel configurations. One of them that's 90 degrees, so due east, due south, and due west. And then another one that's southeast, south, and southwest is the three. So there's a little tighter spacing between those, that configuration of three panels. And then there's a four panel configuration, due east, due west, and then one at uh, south southeast and south southwest. And then a five panel configuration, which you can see the spacing here at a 45 degree spacing between the panels. So the idea is here we're going to try to take this basic curve that one panel has and stagger several panels, all generating basically the same performance curve to see what it would look like. Uh, using them as fixed panels in an array but at pointing at different directions and seeing how the overall power comes out for those. So if I take the, the biggest case here, five panels, <clears throat> this is what it would look like. So we'd have five panels, first one facing due east, so right in the at six in the morning and I'm, again I'm looking at the spring equinox or the uh, yeah, the spring equinox, so right when the sun comes up, well, something is facing directly at it, and it soon after sunrise picks up full power, but as the sun transitions across the sky, the power for that fixed panel starts to drop off, and it actually goes to zero. The next panel, which is facing 135, starts to pick up power as the sun gets closer to its uh, point in the sky, and then once that peaks at about 9 a.m., that starts to fall off and goes to zero. Now you got the third panel facing due south. It gets its full power at noon and then a little less on either side of it. But that's the primary south facing panel and then so on and so forth. So you can see the five panels uh, are all contributing to, to some degree but you can tell obviously the ones facing most east they're going to quit producing while the sun is uh, beyond south facing. So given that, <coughs> we can take a, do a graph that kind of looks at each of those individually. So here's the one single panel configuration, which is one we've already covered. You get what I call the power multiplier, which is basically 100% of the, a single panel's power right at noon, and then a little less of that each side of it. If I look at two panels, based on the configuration I showed, basically one facing southeast and one facing southwest, you will get obviously more power early and power later but the maximum doesn't end up being any more any just a little bit more than what it would be if it was just a single panel and that's because at at, at noon the southeast facing panel is on the downside of its production and then the uh, the southwest facing panel is just starting to rise with its production but it gives you a broader uh, range of production for a two-panel configuration, which can be very helpful 
if you need to charge batteries right away in the morning, having panels that are east facing to pick up that uh, right away is good. And we can continue on. Let's look at the third configuration. This is with the east facing panel, a south facing panel, and a west facing panel. You see that it obviously is going to do a little bit better because we got three panels involved. But right at solar noon, only the south facing panel is going to be producing. The one facing due east has stopped producing and the one facing due west has not started producing yet. So that's why it drops right down there, which is kind of interesting. If we look at the other configuration of three panels, where we have one to the southeast, one to the south, and one to the southwest, clearly all three of them are contributing very well. One, The one facing due south is putting his full amount in, and the ones facing southeast and southwest are doing about two-thirds of their production right at noon. So you'll see that is a very strong peaky at, at noontime, but less than uh, even the two panel configuration in the early morning and in the evening. If you look at the four panel case, it's basically a version of the two panel just uh, stepped up a little bit more. So that's nice amount and you can tell the total power we're getting here instead of one we're, we're not even up to two yet even though we have twice the number of panels in this four panel configuration and then in the five panel configuration we got the broadest tallest amount for that so if you want to put five panels up and stagger them I believe by 45 degrees across you'll get a nice profile like this and that might be a better solution than putting in a a solar tracker uh, configuration. So if I summarize this in a chart here, <coughs> we'll take a look at uh, our, here's our configurations that we showed before, one to five panels, what the spacing is, and then here's what I call the watt hour factor, which means if you have, a, let's say you have a thousand watts facing south, a single array facing south, it'll it'll generate about 7.4 kilowatt hours that day. If you have two panels, and if you had the two panels and faced them both south, you'd obviously get twice this. You get 14.8. But the fact you're staggering a little bit to be able to get some early production and some late production, you're actually sacrificing a little bit of total power. In this case, it's 11 percent that you're that you're uh, forfeiting in order to get that uh, improvement in, in wider coverage. Same with the three and the four and the five panel configurations. You can see their their effectiveness versus all of them facing south is, is shown here. It looks to me that this 3B configuration with them staggered in this way actually does probably uh, the best as far as what you get bang for the buck. Because if you look at here, it would be three times <coughs> 7.4, which would be 22.2, .2, and it's coming out at 19.2. So we're spending three times the money. So you get three panels, three frames, and you're able to get 87% of the uh, effective power of having them all facing due south. And if we look at what that looks like on the chart again, the second three panel configuration, you know, right pretty quickly in the morning, you know, by seven, within an hour of sunrise, let's say, you're getting the wattage of a full panel, basically, climbing up. Come noontime, you're getting more than twice the power of a single panel. And then later on in the day, you're still maintaining at least a full panel's worth of power up until uh, you know within a, within an hour of sundown so anyway I thought this was an interesting exercise maybe it'll be helpful to you clearly uh, you can change those uh, degrees that you're gonna stagger panels so you might want to have them facing a little bit more north than east than I was showing I started everything at 90 degrees east 90 degrees west but it just kind of gives you the idea how you can go about calculating this stuff all right, catch you later.